football or soccer is by far the most thrilling sport to watch according to most people. While math formulas are, according to many people, way too tiring to even stare at. In this video, I'm gonna show you how math is the driving force behind the adrenaline rush every time you watch football. If you came across this video by searching the keyword football or soccer, well, thanks for the view, but please be advised that this video discusses mostly math and especially geared towards mathematicians who have little knowledge about football. But if you are a math nerd who happens to love football just like me, then welcome aboard! Hopefully, everyone knows that there are 11 players in a football team with one goalkeeper who is always staying in the net. But how about the remaining 10 players? Where should they stand on the pitch? In modern football nowadays, there are generally 18 main tactical team formations. But looking at the two clubs who have been dominating their domestic leagues half a decade now, Bayern Munich in the German Bundesliga and Manchester City in the English Premier League, while well, at least when Sergio Aguero was still there. More than often, they applied the 4-2-3-1 formation, especially in Bayern's case in the year 2020 under coach Hansi Flick. Using only the 4-2-3-1 formation the entire season, they made history by becoming the second club in the world to win a sextuple both domestically and internationally. So what is the 4-2-3-1 formation? 4-2-3-1 formation is a very strong attacking football formation with four defenders at the back responsible for clearing the ball, preventing the opponents from scoring. In front of them are two defensive midfielders who will be helping the defenders in preventing the opponent from going deeper. They would also read the game and deploy the ball to the upfront when attacking. Then we have three attacking midfielders who may score when possible, but mainly they will be creating chances for ultimately the striker to score in the box. So why is this formation so powerful and prevalent nowadays in attacking football? If you take a closer look at the 4-2-3-1 formation, you will realize that this formation creates a whole lot of build-up triangles, which is surprisingly a very powerful shape in football. With these build-up triangles, diagonal passings become possible. Compared to when three players stand on the same line, the two players at the two endpoints of the line segment have only one option to pass the ball to the player in the middle or to take risk and chip the ball in the air without knowing if their teammate can successfully get it. This is very dangerous as the opponent can easily tell where the ball is heading and interrupt the pass. With a triangle shape, footballers have more options to pass the ball as the player in the middle is pulled back. At the same time, if two players of team A and a defender of team B together form a right triangle, a pass along the hypotenuse, the longest side of a right triangle, would force the defender to run a longer distance and thus lower the chance that they can prevent a successful pass. Additionally, we all know that there are at least two acute angles in any triangle. This abundant number of acute angles helps pull the team formation closer to each other which makes it easier for the player to complete short passing and thus, the receiver can take full control of the ball after only 1-2 to two touches. This is important as the fewer touches the player has to perform on the ball, the lower the chance that the rival can exploit the space, tackle and steal the ball from them. Also notice that the number 10, the central attacking midfielder in this formation, has got to be the most dangerous man with an exceptional spatial intelligence. His position is linked with at least 5 other players and his freedom to move allows him to come up with passing and shooting options that makes it nearly impossible for the opponent to cope with. At the same time, taking any player from the team and rotating them 360 degrees, you can still see that they have equally likely passing options in all directions, directly back and forth or diagonally back and forth. Such a large sample space makes it hard for the opponent's defenders to follow or predict their next steps. In addition, with multiple human resources in the middle of the pitch, 4-2-3-1 formation is very flexible in the sense that it could be altered into other formations accordingly. For example, when the opponent counter-attacks, the two wingers may run back to form a 4-4-2 formation 
which is generally considered the best defensive formation in modern football. And of course, they can always easily run up again when it's time for the team's pressing. Well, apparently not all football fans are professional players, so how do we, the non-professionals, benefit from this footballmatic stand? The truth is, many football fans actually make money from this hobby of theirs by placing bets on football match outcomes. In this video, I would like to show you how we can build the most basic prediction model using the statistical distribution for song distribution. A song distribution is a discrete probability distribution that predicts the likely number of times an event would occur within a fixed time interval if these events occur with a constant rate. In the case of football betting, one may apply the Poisson distribution to predict the number of goals that would be scored within a match as scoring also happens on an incremental scale. Poisson distribution has the following probability mass function, P of K equals to lambda to the k times e to the negative lambda divided by k factorial, where p is the probability, k is the number of occurrences on the interval, and lambda is the expected number of goals. Suppose we want to predict the outcome of the upcoming Manchester City versus Liverpool match in the 21-22 English Premier League, whereas Manchester City is playing at their home stadium Etihad. Before building our prediction model, we must first calculate the attacking strength and defensive strength of each team from their average goals scored and conceded in the league, where attacking strength is number of goals scored divided by number of games played divided by the league average scored per game, and defensive strength is number of goals conceded divided by number of games played divided by the league average conceded per game. Note that the higher the defensive strength index is, the worse the team's defense is as they concede too many goals. League average is computed by taking the average of all the teams in the league's indices. Retrieving data from the FBREF, I get City's home attacking strength is 1.92 and home defensive strength is 0.55, whereas Liverpool's away attacking strength is 1.97 and away defensive strength is 0.58. We then compute the two teams' expected goals, including penalty kicks, where expected goals for home team is home team's home attacking strength times the away team's away defensive strength times the league's average number of home goals per match, and expected goal for away team is away team's away attacking strength times the home team's home defensive strength times the league's average number of away goals per match. And so we get the expected goals for Manchester City is 1.659, whereas that of Liverpool is 1.395. Apparently, no football match ends with such a decimal scoreline. We next use the Poisson distribution to predict which team would win and what scoreline is the most probable. Using the Poisson distribution function in Excel to first compute the probability of each number of goals that each team may score in this game, in this example, we are stopping at a cap of 5 goals, but theoretically speaking, the number of goals could go on to infinity. Let big M be the events that Man City scores small m goals, and big L be the events that Liverpool scores small l goals. Observe that M and L are two independent events, therefore, we want to use the multiplication rule to compute the probability of each scoreline by multiplying the probability p at m equals m times p at l equals l. I sum up all the probabilities in blue to find the chance that Man City would win this game, and similarly, all the red cells for Liverpool winning, and all the yellow for a draw result. It seems that Manchester City has a higher chance of 43.1% of winning this game with a scoreline 2-1, Notice that there is even a higher chance that the scoreline would be 1-1, but the probability that the match ends with a draw is only 23.83%. At this point, it is up to the better to trade their bets on a draw of 1-1 versus a city win of 2-1. Now, even though I hope that my prediction would not age like milk tomorrow, I do realize that this Poisson distribution model is not impeccable. The problem with using the Poisson distribution to predict match outcome is that we are using the average number of goals to predict the scoreline, but mean is generally not the best indicator. 
For some distribution does not work well in games where the two teams are much different in capability. For example, Burnley is a really weak team in the Premier League who is currently ranked 18 in the league table. They have only scored against weak teams, which should be worth less than Manchester City's goals. Using this prediction strategy, however, will give us a draw of 1-1 as the most likely outcome for the game between Burnley and Manchester City, which does not seem possible intuitively. All in all, there are of course still many other applications of math in football on and off the pitch, such as why the assistant referees move up and down diagonally opposite of each other on the sidelines, how to win a penalty, how to save a penalty, what is the optimal angle of a throw-in, etc. I do hope to research more on these football problems and give you more detailed mathematical answers in the future. But hopefully, this video has successfully persuaded you that football is not only a game of physicality or luck, but also a game of the mathematical brains.